welcome to the special edition of Tech24. We're in the port city of Saint-Malo, Western France, to tell you more about an incredible expedition that's already dubbed as the solar impulse of the seas. For six years, two men, Victorien Roussard and Jérôme de la Fosse, will sail around the world in this X-Racing catamaran to prove to the rest of the planet the effectiveness of renewable energies. Tech24 is the official TV partner. We'll be following them in their voyage around the world, first touring France. Our reporters Julien Sauvager and Delano de Sousa tell us how this tech laboratory was built here in Brittany. Behind this tent on the French port city of Saint-Malo, sailors, architects and engineers are hard at work. Over the past four years, around 50 people have been tasked with developing this giant of the seas. First built in Canada in 1983, this 31-meter long and 12-meter wide vessel has seen many lives. It's a historic boat. It's been in the hands of a number of sailors. I'm reminded of the period of Enza, where the New Zealand team and skipper Peter Blake won the Jules Verne Cup in 1994. The boat really has a history. The idea was to invest in research and development rather than get rid of it. Totally transformed, it would now be difficult for Sir Peter Blake to recognize his boat today. The mast has been replaced with a special sail that resembles a giant kite, and the platoon has been covered with solar panels, totaling a surface area of close to 140 square meters. We call this the solar glass, given that we need to maximize its surface. We developed a module with more space between the solar cells. It allowed us to have a bit more clarity into the boat's interiors. The interiors are still being finalized, but the boat's motor has already been put in place in the floaters. A restrained space which constrained engineers when developing the world's smallest hydrogen cell. To have clean hydrogen, you need to electrolyze the water. We take the seawater, remove the salt, desalinate it, clean it. Then we place it in an electrolyzer, which will decompose the water molecule. Hydrogen on one side, oxygen on the other. The idea is to aim for energy autonomy. It's a floating smart grid, and the advantages with hydrogen is it doesn't emit CO2, nor any fine particles. It's just one of the many advanced technologies aboard this vessel, which is considered a floating laboratory. This boat is a prototype through and through. For everything, we only have prototypes here, so it's extremely complicated to put it in place. We try, we test. There's an entire testing phase once the boat is in the water to check all the systems are functioning. The energy observer will constantly evolve as it adds new technologies developed by startups they come across along the way. And we're going to dig a little bit deeper with our guest, Jérôme de la Fosse. You're a documentary filmmaker, a professional scuba diver, but also the expedition leader of the Energy Observer. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. We just saw in the report how ambitious the Energy Observer is, and we're starting to grasp just how much it could help in the fight against global warming. This boat is literally like an emblem of what the energy networks of tomorrow will look like. Tell us more about how all of this started. Victorien came up to you, told you about this project. What was your first reaction? Uh, I would say joy, a great joy and honor to be uh, aboard this boat. That was still, a, a, I mean, a, a just a project at the beginning. Um, but uh, mostly, um, I would say that uh, the main idea was to explore the world without uh, leaving a carbon footprint uh, behind us. More than this, I've been exploring the ocean for the last 20 years, and I could see at my little scale uh, how much uh, humans impact the environment. Uh, I also saw many animals and uh, humans suffering of this situation, and I would say that uh, this boat now uh, allows us to take action, really, I mean, to change things uh, for the better. Now tell us, why is hydrogen the best solution, and what are some of the challenges that you're going to face while sailing around the world solely on renewables. Hydrogen is a great solution because it allows us to be uh, 10 times lighter than if we were using uh, regular batteries. So that's the main uh, ch challenge for us. We will have, after that, many other problems to solve, such as uh, uh, irregularity of uh, renewable energies. But uh, well, I'm sure that we will uh, we'll find solutions. <laughs> 
And now the boat will travel around the world. It will stop in 101 ports. The goal, of course, is to showcase the effectiveness of renewable energies, but also to take a look at all the different tech solutions that already exist uh, around the planet. Have you spotted some startups that have developed solutions that you'd like to integrate to the Energy Observer? There are things that we would like to integrate, but we will want also to show how much people, you know, are moving now, okay? That's the, the main thing. We want to show technologies, but we want also to show people inspiration, you know? And I think it's very important for the citizen of the world, you know, to see that uh, every morning many million people, you know, are just waking up with an idea. And that's the main point. And as an example, I would talk about uh, Glowy, which is uh, an amazing solution of a young woman who synthesizes bacteria, you know, from uh, the abyss, from uh, bioluminescent animals um, that are producing real light. And uh, she wants to use it in uh, urban lightning without any other energies. That's, that's a great thing that we could have about the Energy Observer. Just like Solar Impulse, so many people told you this was impossible. Look at you today with the boat right here. Looking back, how does that make you feel? I feel very happy. I mean, to see that boat here in, in front of my hometown, which is an historical town, that's amazing. But like Solar Impulse, I mean, André Borschberg and Bertrand Picard, it took them about 17 years to fly a solar plane. So I know that we will have to face many, many problems, but we will solve them for sure. Um, there is something else uh, much uh, higher that we share with, uh, with Solar Impulse. It's the spirit, you know, pioneering spirit. We've been, uh, I mean, in the past exploring the world, you know, to conquer. We want to explore the world for a cleaner future and to share all these solutions with uh, our community. Jérôme de la Poste, thank you so much for speaking to us. Uh, we're going to move on now to Test 24 with Dan and Jay Cattlecar, who's aboard the Energy Observer. He's going to take you on a more in-depth tech tour of this catamaran of the future. Dan, I hope you have your sea legs for this one. Fortunately, I do, Julia, and I'm right now standing on this extraordinary boat. It is a tech lover's dream for multiple reasons. Now, the feature that makes this stand apart is the use of hydrogen as a fuel. Hydrogen, as we saw earlier in this report, is generated using the process of electrolysis using an electrolyzer, which is underneath me. So when hydrogen is generated, it is pushed through a compressor. It is pressurized till 350 bar, and then it is stored in tanks, which will be placed in this cavity behind me. There are two tanks, each with a capacity of 30 kilograms. Hydrogen is then fed into a fuel cell. It's a proton exchange membrane fuel cell, which splits hydrogen into proton and electron. The electrons are rooted into a circuit. You get electricity, which charge the batteries, and the protons are then mixed with oxygen to get water vapor as an end product. Uh, around 360 grams of hydrogen is generated per hour using, uh, using the uh, electrolyzer and you need almost 3.2 kilograms hydrogen per hour to power this boat. This 3.2 kilograms of hydrogen will produce 52 kilowatt hour of energy, half of which is spent in heat, and 26 kilowatt hour energy, what our energy is what's required to power this boat. Now, there are three important technologies aboard this boat, which I'll be very interested in showing to you, so follow me. As you can see here, I'm surrounded by solar panels. The ones on the sides are called bifacial solar panels because they take energy from the sun as well as from the reflection on the water and on the other parts of the boat. These solar panels are, of course, the primary source of power for the boat. The other important aspect of these panels are that they have an anti-slid surface, which prevents anyone who walks on them from sliding. Now, here there's a cavity for the uh, traction kite, the intelligent traction kite. It essentially is a giant kite which measures around 50 square meters. It can extend till 80 meters in uh, length. And this is essentially tugs the boat when there are strong winds and it gives the rest of the systems a breather. It can generate between two to four kilowatt an hour of energy. Now, the other uh, interesting innovative aspect of this boat is the use of these wind turbines which are, which are on dynamic support. These wind turbines generate around 3 kilowatt hour of energy, 1.5 kilowatt hour energy each turbine, and they, they measure 2 meters in, in height. So all these systems, as you can see, they are renewable, they don't use any fossil fuel, and some of them may seem a bit too futuristic, but a bit too uncommon, but not really, because as we see, there are many examples of 
hydrogen uh, power being used in vehicles, in bicycles. So it's really the taste of the future, something that we are going to embrace very soon. Along with Tech24, many other scientists, institutions are partner of this Energy Observer expedition, and one of the main backers is well-known French environmentalist Nicolas Hulot. If you go on board, you will be convinced that the future is here, and the future could be nice. If we use the human genius to resolve our difficulty, we can find very nice solutions. And this boat, can do the demonstration, then everywhere in the world, in a short time, everybody will be, could be autonomous on energy aspect. It's the end of this special edition of Tech24 dedicated to the Energy Observer, this catamaran that is going to go around the world for six years solely on renewable energies. We hope you enjoyed the show and we're going to leave you with these beautiful pictures of the boat and the city of Samaru.